Hello from Halifax. This is Joe with Joe to the World Creations, and today we're going to be making my moss stitch baby blanket. This is a really easy crochet baby blanket pattern, so it's perfect for beginners or experienced crocheters, and it works up very quickly. This pattern creates a blanket that is approximately 32 inches high and 32 inches wide, but the size is completely customizable. The blanket is made from the chain row up, so to make the width of the blanket bigger or smaller, adjust the number of starting chains in multiples of 2 plus 1, meaning that your number of starting chains should be an odd number. To make the height of the blanket bigger or smaller, make more or fewer rows. What you'll need to complete this pattern is approximately 1,020 yards or 932 meters of medium size 4 yarn. I used one skein of Pound of Love by Lion Brand in the color pastel green. You can use any medium or worsted weight size 4 yarn. You'll also need a size K or 10.5, which is a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook for the blanket body, and a size I9, 5.25 millimeter hook for the border. And finally, you'll need scissors, yarn needle, and optional is a measuring tape. This video will show you step by step how to make this blanket from start to finish, but you can follow along with the free pattern which is available on my website, or you can purchase the print ready ad free PDF which you can save and keep forever, and I'll leave links to both in the description below this video. I really hope you enjoy making this baby blanket. If you like this video, I'd be so delighted if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. All right, let's get started. So I've got my hook and my yarn. A couple things to note is I am using a K hook. However, some people prefer to go up one hook size for the starting chains only so that you can work more easily into the back ridge loop on row one, which we'll go through together. However, I prefer just to use the same hook for everything, but it's totally up to you. And with my yarn, for the actual blanket that you see in the pictures, I used pastel green. However, for this video, I'm using a slightly darker color green, just so that it's easier for you to see. So to start, we're gonna make a slip knot. So we make a loop, pull through another loop, and pull tight, put the loop on our hook, and pull tight. Now the, for the size that I made, I chained 101. This creates a blanket that is approximately 32 inches wide. If you want to make your blanket wider or smaller, feel free to chain a different number of chains. Just ensure that it's an odd number. So you can make the starting chains a multiple of two plus one, which is an odd number. But um, if you wanna make it the size that I did, chain 101. So we're just gonna start chaining. So you can chain 101 or however many chains you'd like, as long as it's an odd number. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna make a swatch and then show you step by step how to make the blanket. So go ahead and put me on pause and come back when you have your number of starting chains that you'd like. Now that you have your starting chains made, we're gonna start row one. We're gonna be working in the second chain from hook. So this is the first chain, that's the second chain, and we're gonna be working into the back ridge loop. So I'm gonna take my hook out and show you. This loop here is the top loop. This is the bottom loop. And if you slightly twist your chain to the back, you're gonna see these bumps along the back and they're also called the back bumps, but um, I call them back ridge loops. And we are going to be working into the back ridge loops all the way across the chain. So in the second chain from hook, this one here, working into the back ridge loop, we are going to single crochet. So 
twisting over in the second chain into the back ridge loop, insert our hook into the back bump there, and single crochet. In the next back ridge loop, we're also going to single crochet. And we are going to do this into each back ridge loop all the way across. So into each back ridge loop, single crochet. So you can go ahead, put me on pause, and come back to the video when you've single crocheted into each back ridge loop all the way across. So you should have just single crocheted into each back ridge loop all the way across. If you made 101 starting chains, you should have 100 single crochet stitches made. So whatever your number of starting chains was, you should have one less single crochet stitch made. To start round two, we are going to chain one and turn. We are going to skip the first stitch. So the stitch that's attached to the chain, we are going to skip that stitch and work into the following stitch. And we are going to single crochet into the following stitch. And because we've chained one, by skipping that first stitch and working into the following stitch, that's gonna create our first gap space. And that's gonna be important for the next row. So skipping that first stitch, working into the following stitch, we are going to single crochet and our first gap space is created. Now we are going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet into the following stitch. So we're going to single crochet into the following stitch, and now we have our second gap space that is now created. And all the way across the row, we are going to do the exact same thing. Chain one, skip the next stitch, working into the following stitch, single crochet. And there's another gap space we've created. So you can go ahead, put me on pause, and what you'll do for the whole row is just chain one, skip the next stitch, working into the following stitch, single crochet. So put me on pause, come back to the video when you're nearing the end of the row and we'll do the end of the row together. So as I'm nearing the end of the row, I've just made a single crochet stitch and I have two stitches left. My last stitch is a little smaller. That's okay, we're still gonna work into it. So we're gonna still do what we've done across the whole row, which is chain one, skip the next stitch, and then we're going to single crochet into the last stitch. And that completes row two. You should have, if you chained 101, you should have 50 single crochet stitches and 50 gap spaces created. To start row three, we're gonna chain one and turn. We're gonna work into the first gap space, which is this space in between two single crochet stitches from the previous row. We are going to single crochet into that gap space. So single crochet into the gap space and that creates a new gap space for row three. Now we're going to chain one and single crochet into the next gap space. Again, it's the space in between the two single crochet stitches from the previous row. We're gonna single crochet into that gap space and chain one. As you can see, another new gap space has now been created. And this is the entire pattern. So we've single crocheted, chained one, and working into the next gap space, single crochet. Chain one, work into the next gap space, and single crochet. It's super easy, and it works up really, really quickly. So 
chain one, work into the next gap space, and you're gonna do this all the way across the row. Feel free to put me on pause and come back when you're nearing the end of the row and we'll do that together. So I'm nearing the end of the row. I've just made a single crochet stitch in my second last gap space. So I'm going to chain one and now I'm going to work into the final gap space of the row. But this one's a lot tighter than the previous gap spaces, but there is still a space there. So we're gonna work in between the last single crochet and the turning chain from the previous row. So into that last gap space, we are going to single crochet. And that completes row three. Once again, you should, if you've made 101 starting chains, you should have 50 single crochet stitches and 50 gap spaces created. Now for row four and for the remainder of the pattern, we're going to repeat what we just did with row three. So we're going to chain one and turn after every row and work into the gap space. So the first gap space here, we're going to single crochet and chain one, working into the next gap space, single crochet and chain one. You're gonna do this all the way across single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet and chain one. So you'll do this all the way across the row until you get to the end. And at the end of each row, you're gonna work in between the last single crochet stitch and your turning chain. And it's always gonna be a little tighter, but still make one single crochet stitch into that last gap space. So you're going to repeat that for as many rows as you'd like for your to achieve your desired height. If you would like to create the size blanket that I did, which in the end turns out to be 32 inches high, I made approximately 94 rows in total. And my blanket before I started the border was 26 inches. So feel free to follow those um, numbers or whatever desired height you'd like to achieve. Just keep repeating the exact same row over and over until your desired height. All the rows have the same number of stitches. They have the same number of gap spaces. When, you're, when you've achieved your desired height, come back to the video. Uh, don't fasten off. We will start the border together and I'll leave the exact timing of when we start the border in the description below this video. Hope you enjoy making the blanket body and we will see you when it's time to start the border. So for the border, you can start the border after any row. It doesn't matter which way is facing you as the blanket is completely reversible. So don't worry if you're ending on an odd number row or an even number row, it really doesn't matter. But it is important to now switch hooks. So I recommend using an I hook, an I9 5.25 millimeter hook, or going down two hook sizes from whatever you used for the blanket body. So I'm now using my new hook and we're going to start border round one. So we are not going to turn. You can just, whenever you wanna start the border, don't turn, just start from wherever you've left off. But we are going to chain one. And now we are going to work down the side of the blanket. And we are going to be working into the gap spaces created at the ends of each row. And I'm going to say to single crochet evenly into these gap spaces all the way down the side of the blanket. And what I mean by that is try to make your single crochet stitches in the same place at the end of each row so that you don't have a row with three single crochet stitches in one row and one in another. Just try to make one single crochet stitch into the, each of the gap spaces created at the ends of the row all the way down the side. 
So we've ended with a single crochet stitch. We've just uh, chained one. So we're gonna skip, we're not gonna work into that same single crochet stitch. We're gonna work into the very first gap, spit, gate gap space we can find at the end of the row. Now, this is not an exact science, and, and I should say what we'll be doing is single crocheting but it's not an exact science. The border is really, really forgiving. You don't need to worry about how many stitches you have. The goal is just to create a good foundation for the rest of the border. So just single crochet evenly into the gap spaces at the ends of each row, all the way down the side of the blanket. And I say down, even though you're probably gonna turn your work and work across. So you're gonna make single crochet stitches all the way down the side of the blanket until you get to the corner stitch. And excuse the dog hair, I think I say that in every video. Uh, into this corner stitch, we are going to make three single crochet stitches into the corner stitch. So into the same stitch, we're going to single crochet three times. That was one, two, and three. And don't worry if your starting tail is on the other side, it doesn't matter, it can be on either side. The important thing is that at every corner you're gonna make three single crochet stitches. Now working along the bottom, which now it looks like the top because we started here, but this is actually the bottom, we are going to single crochet into each stitch across. These are gonna be a little tight, but that's okay, take your time and just make sure to single crochet into each stitch across the bottom. So you can go ahead, put me on pause and come back when you're nearing the next corner. So I've single crocheted into each stitch across the bottom, one stitch left before the corner and into the corner stitch, we're going to make three single crochet stitches into the same corner stitch. So that's one, get some more yarn here, two, and three. Now working up the sides, even though it's gonna look like we're just working across, essentially this is the up working up the other side. We're gonna do the same thing we did on the previous side, which is working into the gap spaces at the ends of each row, we are going to single crochet. So try just to work into the same spot at the end of each row and single crochet all the way up the side. Feel free to put me on pause, come back when you're nearing the corner. So I've arrived at the corner stitch. I'm going to make three single crochet stitches into this corner stitch two and three. Now for the top of the border for round one, what we're going to be doing is working into the gap spaces just like we did for the whole pattern. So working in between the two single crochet stitches, we're going to make two single crochet stitches into each gap space all the way across. So we've made three stitches in our corner, so now we're going to work into the gap space and make two single crochet stitches into each gap space. So there's my first gap space into my second gap space. One, two. Into the next gap space, one, two, and you're gonna do this all the way across. Put me on pause and come back when you've made two single crochet stitches into each gap space and we'll do the last corner together. So I've just made two single crochet stitches into each gap space and into the corner stitch, the last corner stitch, I'm going to make three single crochet stitches. One, two, with my three single crochet stitches made into the corner, I'm going to skip over the chain one that started the round 
and slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch made. So slip stitch to the first single crochet stitch made to join the round. And now we're going to start round two. So for round two, we're going to chain one and turn. What we'll be doing in round two is single crocheting all the way around, making three single crochet stitches in each corner. So we are nearing the first corner right away. Now you may have one or two or no stitches before your corner. It's, it's totally fine, whatever your stitch count is. Just work into the first stitch and then as soon as you get to the corner, make three single crochet stitches into that corner stitch. So if you have a couple more stitches there, that's okay. Before you get to the corner, just single crochet into them and into the corner stitch, make three single crochet stitches. So that was one, two, and three. And then single crochet in each stitch until you get to the corner, into your corner stitch, make three single crochet stitches into that same corner stitch all the way around. And let's um, get back together when you're nearing the end of the round and we'll join together. So we've just finished single crocheting all the way around and in each corner making three single crochet stitches. So I have one stitch left here. To join the round, we are going to slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch made to join. Now to start round three, we're gonna chain one and turn. And we are gonna do the exact same thing that we just did with round two. So we are going to work into the first stitch and single crochet and single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When we get to the corner stitch, make three single crochet stitches into each corner stitch all the way around. And you can put me on pause and come back to the video when you're about to join the round and we will join the round and start the next round together. So I just did most of round three, single crocheting in each stitch, making three single crochet stitches in each corner. And now I am going to slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch made to join the round. And we are now going to start round four. So we have three rounds of single crochet stitches and now the fun really begins. So to start round four, we're gonna chain one and turn. In the first stitch, so the stitch that's attached to the chain, we are going to single crochet. In the next stitch, we are going to triple crochet. Triple crochet stitches are also called treble crochets. I personally call them triple, but you can call them whatever you'd like. And let's do our first triple crochet stitch together. So we are going to yarn over twice, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up our loops, a loop. So we have four loops on our hook. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull our yarn through two of those loops. Now we're gonna yarn over and pull our yarn through two of those loops. And once again, yarn over and pull our yarn through both remaining loops. And that's our first triple crochet stitch. The next stitch after that is a single crochet stitch. But here's where it gets a tiny bit tricky, but don't worry, there's a really easy fix, is that at every corner, we are going to want to do a single crochet stitch, a triple crochet stitch, and a single crochet stitch into the same corner stitch. But we want our stitches to alternate between single, triple, single. And as you can see here, my stitch before the corner is a single crochet stitch. However, we want the last stitch before the corner to be a triple. 
So what I'm gonna do is make a triple crochet stitch into the same stitch as my single. So into the same stitch, I'm gonna do another triple. So yarning over twice, yarning over, pulling up a loop, four loops, yarning over, pulling through my yarn through two loops, pulling my yarn through two loops, and pulling my yarn through the last two loops. Now, your stitch count as you approach the corner may have looked different. We weren't adamant about exact number of stitches because it's so easy to fix and make this work. So if you your stitch before the corner was just one triple crochet stitch, that's perfect. You don't need to add anything. You don't need to do anything. This is just to show you if you come to the corner and your stitch before the corner is a single, add a triple into the same stitch. However, if you're able to do single triple, single triple before the corner, that's perfect. As long as you end with a triple and your stitches alternate between the singles and triples, that's all you need to do. So now that we're at the corner, we can make our single triple single into the same corner stitch. So let's do that now. So into the same stitch, we're going to single crochet and then triple into the same stitch. and single all into the same stitch. The next stitch after the corner for this round will always be a triple crochet. So we're gonna do a triple into the next stitch and then repeating single crochet in the next stitch, triple crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, triple crochet in the next stitch, all the way across. So go ahead and put me on pause and follow that pattern of now that we've made our triple, the next one will be a single, the next one after that will be a triple and repeating single, triple, single, triple all the way across. And when you get to the corner, um, come back to the video and we will do that together. So I've just finished alternating between single and triple crochets all the way across until I've gotten to the corner here. And you can't really see it while you're looking at it, but when you turn your work over, you're gonna see this lovely textured start of the textured border. So this is my corner stitch uh, right here, and I have one stitch left before my corner and I've been following between, alternating between single and triples, and I have one stitch left with my last stitch before that stitch as a single crochet. So my next stitch will be a triple crochet, which works out perfectly to follow the pattern of alternating between the two, so that when I start the corner, I can do my single, triple, single into the same corner stitch, and I don't need to do anything else since my last stitch is a triple. However, if your last stitch before the corner is a single, simply add a triple crochet into that same stitch. So for me, this is working out, so I'm gonna do my triple before I start the corner. But again, if your stitch count is not working out, you can easily add a triple to that last single crochet stitch before the corner. Now in the corner, we're going to do a single and then a triple. and another sing single into the same stitch. And that's what you're gonna do all the way around the, the blanket for this round of the border. So every time you've completed a corner, the next stitch will always be a triple for this round. And then you follow the alternating pattern of single crochet, triple crochet, single crochet, triple crochet, all the way across until you get to the corner, into the corner, single, triple, single, into the same stitch, always making sure your last stitch before the corner uh, is a triple, but if, if your last stitch before the corner is a single, just add a triple to the same stitch. The stitch after the corner will always be a triple for this round. So do this all the way around and come back to the video and we will finish the round and join the round together. 
So I've just completed alternating between single crochet and triple crochet stitches all the way around and in each corner made a single, triple, single crochet stitches all in the same corner. So I'm nearing uh, the end of the round. I have one stitch left. So my last stitch that I've made right now is a triple crochet stitch and with one stitch left that would be a single crochet stitch. But since we started the round with a single crochet stitch, we want the last stitch of the round to be a triple crochet stitch. So if you're nearing the end of the round and your last stitch is a triple, nothing you need to do here. You can ignore this next part. But if your last stitch like mine right now is a single crochet stitch, so following the pattern, my next stitch will be a single. I'm going to add a triple into the exact same stitch so that I keep the alternating stitches. So finishing up my round, making sure your last stitch is a triple or add a triple to your last stitch if it's a single. And now we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch that we made to join the round. Slip stitch. And now we're going to start round five by chaining one and turning. You can see the border really coming together now. So for round five, we are going to be working into opposite stitches. And what I mean by that is whenever you see a triple crochet stitch from the previous round, we are going to work a single crochet stitch into that. And then working into single crochet stitches, we are going to make triple crochet stitches into those. But we're gonna be continuing to alternate between single, triple, single, triple, all the way across. And once again, into each corner stitch, making a single, triple, single. So let's do a little bit of that together. Um, one thing, one very important note is for this round, we are going to be skipping the first stitch. So this little stitch that's attached to the chain, we are not going to work into this stitch. We're going to work into the top of the triple crochet from the previous round. And as I mentioned, we're going to be working opposite stitches into those stitches. So since it's a triple, we're gonna, the first stitch will be a single crochet stitch. In the next stitch, which is the single crochet from the previous round, we are going to make a triple crochet stitch. And we are gonna do that all the way across. So repeating single, triple, single, triple, all the way to the corner, and then we'll do the corner together. So I'm nearing the corner. And if you can recall from the previous round, we made a single, triple, single into the corner. So our corner stitch is going to be the triple crochet that was in the middle of that corner stitch. So my last stitch before the corner that we will work into is the top of a single crochet stitch. So your last stitch before the corner will be a triple crochet. Your stitches should work out this round because we set everything up by making those extra stitches when necessary on the previous round. However, for any reason, it's not. Um, it's not a big deal to, to add a triple crochet stitch to a single, um, but for this round, you shouldn't have to, to do that as much um, or, or at all, but if you absolutely have to, it's, it's okay to do that. So now my last stitch before the corner was a triple and into the triple crochet from the previous round, I am going to do a single, triple, single into the same stitch. So a single, triple, and a single into the same stitch. The stitch after the corner for this round will always be a triple. So triple crochet in the stitch after the corner and then follow the same pattern of alternating single in the next stitch, triple in the next stitch, single in the next stitch, triple in the next stitch, all the way into the corner. 
And once again, your stitch before the next corner should be a triple. And then in the corner stitch, do a single, triple, single. And then after the corner, your next stitch will be a triple. So follow that pattern all the way around the blanket. And we will get back together when we're nearing the end of the round. We'll join the round together. So I've just finished single crocheting, triple crocheting, alternating between the two all the way around and in each corner making a single, triple, single in each corner stitch. I have one stitch left before the end of the round and my last stitch is, before the last stitch, is a triple crochet stitch. The thing is, is that we started the round with a single crochet stitch. So we want our last stitch to be a triple. So if your last stitch in the round is a triple, that's great. You don't need to do anything. But in my situation here, my next stitch needs to be a single. And then I'm going to add a triple crochet stitch to the same stitch so that I can ensure my stitches continue to alternate all the way around. So you're finishing the round with a triple crochet stitch. If your last stitch like mine was a single, just add a triple to the same stitch. And now we are going to join the round by slip stitching into the first single crochet stitch. And that completes round five. Now to start round six, we are going to chain one and turn. Now this round is going to be a little different. In the previous round, if you recall, we worked into opposite stitches, meaning that if we were working into a triple crochet stitch, we would single crochet into that. For this round, we're going to be making the same stitches into the same stitches, so that when we're working into a triple crochet stitch, we're going to be making a triple crochet into that stitch. And when we're working a single crochet, we're going to single crochet into a single crochet stitch. We are going to skip the first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain. So skip that and work into the, the next stitch, which is the top of a triple crochet stitch. And we are going to triple crochet into that stitch. We're going to keep alternating between triples and singles, but we'll be working into the same stitch. So we triple crochet into a triple crochet stitch. The next stitch is a single crochet stitch that we're working into. So we're going to single crochet into that stitch. The next stitch is a triple that we're working into. So we're going to triple. And you're going to do this all the way to the corner. The corner is also different. So in the corner, and let me, I'm almost there, so I'll just quickly do my triple. And my stitch before the corner, so if you can remember from last round, in each corner stitch we made a single, triple, single. So our stitch before the corner, so we'll work into the triple because that's the middle of the three stitches we made in the corner from the previous round. So the stitch before that is a single, so we're going to single into that, single crochet into that stitch. So the stitch before the corner is a single crochet stitch. Now working into the triple crochet corner stitch, we are going to make a triple crochet, a single crochet, and a triple crochet into the same stitch. So a triple crochet. A single crochet. And another triple into that same stitch. For this round, every stitch after a corner will be a single and you can easily see which stitch you need to make because we're just doing the exact same stitch as the one you're working into. So the next stitch up the corner is a single 
followed by a triple crochet into a triple crochet stitch. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. So <clears throat> working across until the next corner, I've just made a triple. So the next stitch will be a single, then a triple, single, triple, single, triple, all the way across. The stitch before the corner will be a single crochet. And then in each corner stitch, you will do a triple, single, triple. The stitch after the corner will be a single. And then you repeat that all the way around until you get to the place where we started and come back to the video and we will join the round together. So I just finished working all the way around, alternating between triple and single crochet stitches. And in each corner, I've done a triple, single, triple. So I'm nearing the end of the round and I have one stitch left. My last stitch should be a single crochet stitch because we started the round with a triple crochet stitch. So we want the, the last stitch to be a single, but in my situation, my stitches aren't working out that way. I've just done a single crochet stitch, so I should be making a triple in the next stitch. Um, however, if your stitches are working out and your last stitch is a single, that's great. You don't need to do anything there. That's perfect. That's what it should be. But in my situation, to continue working in this pattern, I'm going to make a triple crochet stitch in the next stitch and then add my single crochet stitch to this last stitch to make the stitch stitches all work out. And then to join the round, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first triple crochet stitch that we made. Slip stitch to join, and that completes round six. To start row round seven, we are going to chain one and turn. Now this round, we are going to go back to working into the opposite stitch. So we're going to skip this first stitch and in the following stitch, which is a single crochet stitch from the previous round, we are going to triple crochet into that stitch. So we're going back to working into opposite stitches for this round. And so I've made a triple crochet into a single crochet and my next stitch, as you can see, is the top of a triple crochet. So I'm going to single crochet into that. So you're going to continue triple, single, triple, single all the way across until you get to the corner. Now for this round in the corner, we're going to keep doing what we did in the last round, which is into the middle stitch which um, if you can recall in the last round, we made a triple, single, triple into the corner stitch. So you're going to work into the single crochet stitch that's in the middle of the corner stitch. So into that trip, into the single crochet stitch that's in the middle of the corner, you're going to once again make a triple, single, triple into that corner stitch and ensure that you're following the pattern. So since you're starting the corner stitch with a triple, so a triple, single, triple, your stitch before the corner should be a single. So you're gonna repeat the pattern alternating between single and triple crochets until you get to the corner. Your last stitch before each corner will be a single crochet. Into the corner, triple, single, triple. And then the stitch after the corner will be a single crochet crochet stitch and then all the way around alternate between triple single triple single and, and then in each corner making a triple single triple and when you get back to where you started so once you've done all four corners and finishing up as you near the end of the round your last stitch will be a single crochet a single crochet stitch in the very last stitch of the round. If for any reason, if it's not, if it's a triple, just add a single to that triple crochet stitch. 
and then join the round by slip stitching into the first triple crochet stitch that we made. That will complete the round. So you'll slip stitch into that first triple crochet stitch that's made, and then you get to fasten off and weave in all your loose ends as that completes the blanket. I really hope you enjoyed making this baby blanket pattern. If you liked this video, I'd be delighted if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.